Howdy folks, this is Big Sam. Today, I've got a real treat for you. We're taking a look at a pretty uncommon Mosin magazine. Specifically, this magazine in question here today is a French contract Mosin de Gant magazine produced by the Chateau factory in France. Uh, and again, these aren't super common. The Chateau factory only produced right around half a million Mosin Nagants for the Russian Empire. And this took place from around 1892 all the way up into 1895. And these are pretty interesting magazines because you can find some neat markings on them that also could be found on other interesting French guns. But also, this is cool because... The Chateau factory in France was the only factory that produced Mosin de Gantz to only produce Mosin de Gantz magazines that had a sling swivel on every single magazine that came out of the factory. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? Well, let me show you an example. Now, here I have a Mosin de Gantz magazine with the original sling swivel on the magazine. And this is actually another Chateau Row uh, magazine, and we'll take a look at this one in another video, because this one is really interesting as well. But just what I'm talking about here, just so you know, is this little sling swivel. When the Mosin de Gant came out, and when the Chateau Row contract was producing Mosin de Gants, uh, in fact, the rear sling swivel on M91 rifles was on the magazine, like that. See that? Now... <laughs> I say that because what's interesting about this one is you'll notice it's missing. So maybe that's the first thing we'll go ahead and take a look at here on this guy. Now, not just on this magazine, but really most magazines that originally had the sling swivel, they're not going to have them anymore. Um, that's because this was done away with in favor of having a hole in the rear of the stock with some escutcheons, metal escutcheons, to accommodate something like a dog collar for a sling, a leather dog collar. Much different than this. This was found by the, by the uh, time the Russo-Turkish War, not the Russo-Turkish War, excuse me, I'm getting my words mixed up here, uh, the Russo-Japanese War. That's the one I was looking for. There's too many wars, folks. Um, I'm sure you can relate to that. Um, they found that in wartime, this was actually a pretty bad idea, uh, that had to have your sling swivel here on the magazine. That's why they moved it to the back of the stock. Okay, well, you'll notice here that you can actually see this little wear pattern right here on the magazine. Um, that's because the sling swivel, right, was also metal, and it would actually eventually wear the magazine body down here because it would move back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, okay? And if we look here in our other example, you can kind of see that, see? Back and forth. This one's not super tight. And when they were super tight, um, well, it, it actually, if you, if you tighten that screw, it can actually bind the, um, the sling swivel itself to the magazine body. And of course, when you do that, you're gonna you're going to impose more friction. And of course, you're gonna induce wear faster. That's why we see that wear mark. Now, notice again, it's missing on this one. Now, what's really fascinating is generally when we see that, okay, when it's missing, this was probably done by Eh, most likely Finland, because they had a ton of these that they decided to get rid of in favor of those escutcheons in the rear of the stock, like I stated previously. This magazine, though, is actually not a Finnish modified magazine, nor was this magazine ever in Finland. And I'll explain in another video why I know that. But if we take a closer look here at this... Uh, rivet, which is the later Russian factory replacement for that sling swivel, right? By the time of around 1908, maybe even a little bit before that, they started replacing these with just the rivets. And this was already being done, remember, from the factories before that for things like the Dragoon rifles and the Cossack rifles. 
and the 1907 carbine rifles, which were all being produced at that time by the Ajevs factory. The Ajevs factory was just building magazines for those rifles with just a standard rivet, no sling swivel. But this one we can tell is not a factory rivet because, well, quite frankly, this one's a little bit ghetto, for lack of a better word. Now, if I put this guy on his side, uh, let me see if I can get a good focus in. You can actually see the rivet's not all that well lined up. That's That can be normal on a lot of these. However, generally for the Finnish Mosins, where Finland replaced the sling swivels, they did a much nicer job. This is a little bit strange to see most of the time, because again, most of the time, we'd be looking at a Finnish Mosin magazine here. Well, that's not what this is. The other side, though, actually looks a hair side nicer. Oh, yeah. But again, here on the other side, you can see that wear pattern there. Okay, so that's enough of the sling swivels. Um, this really does have a lot of nice color left into it. You can kind of see some a little bit of blue there in the magazine when I get it in the light just right. Overall, a really beautiful magazine. A lot of these tend to not have any finish left on them, or they're just really over blued and when they're re-blued and they really lose a lot of their color. This one still has some interesting color though. Now, some of the markings we want to look at here that can help us identify that this is in fact a Chateau Rose stock, we're first going to go back here to the trigger guard. And I'm going to turn the magazine upside down here. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And you're going to notice this little marking right here. We have an R as in Romeo within a shield that has three points at the top. This is a factory marking used by the Chateau Row factory. And you'll typically see this on some, uh, on I guess you could say the earlier guns, really early to later pattern guns is when you'll see this. Later on in the contract, they would get rid of these, but probably by the time that the majority of the guns they would make had already been made. So this is a pretty common marking to see, it, a letter Romeo in a shield. But what's interesting is you won't always see the Romeo. You might see a different letter within the shield. But a shield like this is a very uncommon marking to see on a Mosin Nagant or any sort of Mosin Nagant part. So this is a really good indicator by itself that we're looking at a really different animal, a French contract Mosin Nagant part. So let's move this guy up here a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to the front and I'm going to flip it over. So on this side up here, remember the stock is gonna be here. So when, when this is in the gun, you're not gonna be able to see this side. But if I turn this over, you're still gonna see some interesting markings here. You're gonna see, again, the letter Romeo, but this time you're also gonna see a number 79. Now, what that is exactly is anyone's guess. Uh, my best guess is this would be some sort of inspector number. Um, and what's also cool, if I can uh, find it here, ah, yes. If we go back and flip this guy around to the other side where we were just looking at, you're going to see a number 21. Now, this looks like a, a sort of similar font to what we were just seeing. And again, this may be an, an, an inspector marking. Now. Why would it be if you had, let's say, an inspector putting their inspector markings on a magazine, why would they have two different uh, inspectors mark the same magazine? Well, there's a couple theories for that, but the best one I can think of is actually the fact that this magazine is not one part. So you're going to notice this line right here, okay? And you're going to notice a line sort of back here as well. And what you're also going to notice is these little circles here. So you should see two here, one, two, and then three on this side, one, two, three. That one's a little hard to see. These are actually rivets. That's because the original pattern of these Mosin Nagant magazines called for riveting several different parts together. So you actually have this front piece here. Okay, um, and then you would also have, the, of course, the side piece, 
you'd have this back piece, you'd have another side piece. There are actually a lot of parts to these magazines, but one theory why, theory why we would see different inspector markings, if that's actually what they are again, because we're still hypothesizing on this, is because perhaps they were putting their inspector marks on individual parts before assembly. Now, one also could be a, an individual part, another could be an inspector's mark for after final assembly has been completed. We don't really know, but these are interesting things to consider and interesting things to talk about. So this has some cool markings. Now, Let's go to the bottom because there's some really interesting markings down here. First of all, on the bottom here, this is usually where you look to see who made a magazine. Because remember, even when it's installed on a rifle, you're still going to be able to see this part right here. And this is where you typically see the manufacturer marking of the magazine, whoever built the magazine. They're probably going to put their mark right here on the bottom. And again, we see a Romeo in a shield. So we see that quite a lot on this guy. So again, this tells us this was a French contract rifle. Now, remember with magazines, the floor plate is an entirely separate piece that, that basically clamps onto the rivet here, or if you have a sling swivel, the uh, cross screw holding the sling swivel onto the magazine body. Let's go ahead and turn this guy up here and take a look at the floor plate. Now what's really great, okay, about this magazine is that this has the original number here that has not been defaced or crossed out. This is very, very seldom seen. So it's cool to get this on video to show you guys. But here you can see we have a November, the letter N right here. And on the, the Chateau Road contract rifles, you would always see it have them have a prefix with the letter N. Um, very similar to the Tula factory in Russia, they would also have a letter N prefix before the serial number. However, this N is a much different font. And a lot of times you would only see the Tula uh, N prefix on the serial number on the barrel shank, whereas on the Chateau Row contract, they would actually stamp the N prefix um, on other parts, such as the magazine floor plate and, and the butt plate, and you should also see that on the bolt body, theoretically. But we can see here that we're looking at serial number 222739er. So this is 222,000. So this, this part was made approximately halfway into production of the contract. Because remember, they made about half a million of these rifles. And so from this number, we can infer that this uh, floor plate was produced probably during or before the sixth month of 1894. So somewhere between January and June of 1894 is probably when this floor plate was manufactured. Now, we don't know 100% if this floor plate is original to this magazine body, right? And this that's always tricky to figure out. Um, you can sort of make assumptions, right? It's sort of rare to find a Chateau Row magazine and floor plate. So the fact that they're together could be a good indication that they are original to each other, but it's not definitive. Because remember, the floor plates are what were serialized, not the bodies themselves. But we can go ahead and open this guy up here and take a look at some, if, see if there's any more markings we want to find inside the floor plate. Um, now I don't see too many markings on this side. Let's turn him over. Uh, to this side. Again, I'm not seeing a whole lot, so we're going to flip him over on the top. A lot of these will have small markings. Some of them may have no markings. Ah, yes, we have found a marking here on the bottom. Right here, this is another typical manufacturer marking you will see on French contract Mosinagant parts. Here we do have the letter, it appears to be the letter Bravo, right there, within a diamond. And the top of the diamond is sort of 
either worn off or wasn't completely stamped, but this does in fact appear to be a diamond. And we can see we have some more characters down here that might be Russian, it's kind of hard to say. And then we have another sort of very fancy, nice French style font of some letter right there. But again, this is all very typical to see on French contract Mosinagot parts. All right. So overall, just a really fascinating magazine. And eventually I will show you guys the rifle this goes with because I think you're going to like it. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this really cool French manufactured Mosinagot magazine. If y'all have any questions, make sure to email me. I put my email down in the description of every video. And if you like this video, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, let me know if y'all have any prayer requests. And we'll see y'all next time.